Before we begin with today's stories, make sure to like the video and subscribe to support the channel. Now let's start with the story stories. Story number one. I don't know how to start this, but I guess I should say up front that I never thought I'd end up writing one of these dark web horror stories. You always read them online, and you figure the people posting them are either lying or trying to freak you out for karma. But after what happened to me, I'm not sure anymore. I wish I was one of those people making up a story for Reddit or YouTube, but I'm not. And I wish to hell I'd never clicked that link. But let me back up a bit. For context, I've always been into conspiracy theories. You know, like the whole moon landing thing, JFK, secret government projects, but my favorite has always been Area 51. There's just something about it, right? The secrecy, the stories, the whole alien connection. Like most people, I've read all the wild theories online, but it's never enough. I always wanted to know more. What are they hiding out there in the middle of the desert? Is it really aliens? Or is it something even worse? Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not a total nut. I don't sit around wearing a tinfoil hat or anything. But there's this part of me that's always been drawn to the mystery. So, when I found myself with nothing to do one night, I made the dumbest decision of my life. I decided to poke around the dark web, just for fun. I'd been on there before. Who hasn't, right? You hear all these stories about what you can find, but most of the time it's just shady drug markets and weird forums full of people who seem to live on the fringes of society. Still, I was bored, and boredom makes people do stupid things. So, I downloaded Tor again, fired up my VPN, and started browsing. I wasn't looking for anything in particular. I was just scrolling through the usual sketchy sites when I stumbled upon a link that caught my eye. It didn't have a name, just a series of random numbers and letters. I don't know why, but something about it seemed off, different from the other links. I guess it was curiosity, or maybe just boredom, but I clicked on it. The page that loaded was bare. A black background with one line of white text in the middle of the screen. The truth you seek is hidden in the dark. And below, there was a single link. Download now. I know what you're thinking, and trust me, I was thinking the same thing. Who in their right mind would download some random file from the dark web? But in that moment, I wasn't thinking straight. I was already too deep into it. So, against my better judgment, I clicked the link. The file was about 500 megabytes, bigger than I expected. I sat there, staring at my screen as it downloaded, my heart beating a little faster than usual. Something about this felt wrong, but at the same time, I felt a rush of excitement, like I was about to uncover something huge, something nobody else had ever seen. Once the download finished, I opened the folder. Inside were a bunch of video files, maybe 30 or 40 of them, all with strange file names, just a mix of letters and numbers, no real descriptions. I wasn't sure what to expect, but I clicked on the first one. It was dated August 15th, 1996. The video quality was grainy, like old security camera footage. It showed a sterile hallway like something out of a hospital or research lab. At first, nothing happened. The camera was fixed in place, staring down the empty hallway with a soft buzzing sound in the background. Fluorescent lights, I guess. I was about to skip to the next video when something caught my eye. A man in a white lab coat walked into view, pushing a gurney. I couldn't make out much at first. The footage was too grainy, but as he got closer, I could see something was covered under a sheet on the gurney. The man stopped right under the camera, almost like he knew it was there. He didn't look up though. He just stood there staring down at whatever was under the sheet. His hands were shaking. Then, he reached for the sheet and pulled it back. I felt my stomach drop. Underneath the sheet was, I don't know how to describe it. At first, I thought it was a human body, but it wasn't. It was too thin, too long. Its limbs were all wrong, stretched out almost like they had been pulled from their sockets. Its skin was pale, almost translucent, with dark veins visible underneath. Its head was large, too large for its body, with sunken eyes and a mouth that was too wide. I sat there, staring at the screen, trying to process what I was seeing. It didn't look fake. It didn't look like one of those stupid alien props you see in movies. It looked real, too real. The man in the lab coat stared at it for a few seconds. Then he quickly covered it up and wheeled the gurney out of view. The video ended there. I sat in my chair for a minute, feeling like I'd just seen something I wasn't supposed to see. But that was just the beginning. 
I clicked on the next video, then the next, and then next. Each one was worse than the last. The second video was from 1998, and this one showed what looked like an operating room. There was a man strapped to a table, unconscious, with a team of doctors standing over him. They were all in surgical masks, and the one closest to the camera was holding a scalpel. He started cutting into the man's chest, and I almost looked away. But I didn't. As he cut, something dark and thick oozed from the incision. Not blood, but something else. Something black like tar. The doctors didn't react. They just kept working, cutting deeper until they reached the man's ribs. Then, they spread them apart with some kind of tool, revealing what was inside. It wasn't human. Inside his chest, where his organs should have been, there were these dark, pulsing masses. They writhed and squirmed, almost like they were alive. One of the doctors reached in, carefully removing one of the masses and placing it in a metal tray. It twitched once, then went still. The man on the table didn't move the entire time. He just lay there, motionless, as the doctors continued their work. I watched that video in silence, my mind racing. What the hell was I looking at? What were they doing to him? But more importantly, where was this happening? And why? I clicked on another video, then another. The more I watched, the worse it got. There were videos of people being held in cells, their bodies mutilated and twisted, some of them barely recognizable as human. There were others of strange creatures, things that looked like they'd been pulled straight from a nightmare, floating in tanks filled with some kind of liquid. Their eyes were open, but they weren't moving. They just stared. But the last video I watched was the one that haunts me the most. The date on it was September 11th, 2001. Yeah, I know. The significance of that date didn't hit me at first, but once I realized, it made it even worse. The video was different from the others. It wasn't security footage or a lab recording. This one was filmed with a handheld camera like someone was sneaking around with it. The camera shook as the person filming ran through a desert landscape, the ground kicking up dust under their feet. In the distance, I could see a chain link fence and a large industrial building, probably part of a military base. Area 51, maybe? The cameraman got closer, and I could hear him breathing heavily. He reached the fence and panned the camera up, showing the sign. Restricted area. No trespassing. He hesitated for a second, then slipped through a gap in the fence. The camera cut to static for a moment, then came back. Now the person was inside the facility. He was moving quickly, staying low, avoiding the few people walking around. He made his way into a building and crept down a long hallway, the lights flickering overhead. He stopped in front of a door. The camera zoomed in on a plaque that read specimen containment. At this point, my heart was pounding. I was practically leaning into my screen. The cameraman opened the door, and what I saw next made my blood run cold. The room was filled with large glass tanks. Inside them were creatures, aliens, I guess. They looked similar to the one I'd seen on the gurney in the first video, but these were alive. They were floating in some kind of liquid, their eyes open and staring blankly. Their long, thin limbs twitched occasionally, like they were trying to move but couldn't. Then, one of them turned its head. It happened so fast I almost missed it. One second, it was floating there, lifeless, and the next its head snapped toward the camera. Its eyes, those huge black eyes, locked onto the lens. And for a moment, it felt like it was staring directly at me. The camera jerked violently, and the video cut to black. I slammed my laptop shut and just sat there in the dark, my heart racing, my mind spinning. I didn't know what to think. I didn't know if any of it was real, but it didn't feel like some hoax or movie. It felt too real, too raw. The worst part is, ever since that night, things haven't been the same. I've noticed black SUVs parked outside my house, following me when I go to work. My phone's been acting weird, calls dropping strange noises on the line. In my laptop, it crashed the next morning, completely wiped. Everything gone. I'm writing this because I don't know what else to do. I can't go to the police, they'll think I'm crazy. But I know what I saw. I just don't know how long I have before they come for me too. If you're reading this, stay off the dark web. And whatever you do, don't go looking for the truth about Area 51. You won't like what you find.
begging for it to open. And that night was a perfect example of that. I've always been fascinated with the unknown, aliens, government cover-ups, you know the drill. So, naturally, Area 5-1 was at the top of my list. I'd read all the stuff online about it. Aliens, advanced technology, secret experiments. It felt like the kind of place where all the world's secrets are buried. But no matter how deep I dug, everything I found was just the same recycled nonsense. That's when I decided to try something different. I'd been on the dark web a few times before, never for anything serious, just poking around out of curiosity. I wasn't an expert, but I knew my way around Tor, and I figured that if there was any real, hidden information about Area 51, that's where it would be. So, I did what everyone tells you not to do. I went looking for it. After a while of hopping between shady forums, I found a link. It wasn't anything flashy, just a long string of random numbers and letters. The title of the thread was 51 Truth, which seemed too on the nose to be legit. But I clicked it anyway. The page that opened was basic, with a dark background and white text. At the top, it said, Welcome to the Garden. Beneath it, there were dozens of links, no titles, just dates. Some of them were from the early 90s, others as recent as last year. I had no idea what I was getting into, but I figured I'd start with the oldest link and work my way through. The first few links led to PDFs, heavily redacted documents with almost no useful information. They were the kind of files you'd expect to see from a government agency that didn't want anyone to know what they were really doing. There were mentions of containment protocols, biological hazards, and classified level 5 incidents, but that was it. The more I scrolled, the weirder it got. The last file in the first batch was a video. That's when things started to get seriously messed up. The video was black and white, timestamped June 13th, 1995. It looked like it had been recorded on an old security camera. The footage was of a large, dimly lit room that looked like some kind of underground facility. There were a few metal tables, each with something covered by a sheet and several figures in hazmat suits standing around. I couldn't make out their faces because of the masks, but the way they were moving, it was like they were nervous, fidgety. The camera zoomed in slightly, and one of the figures pulled back the sheet on one of the tables. What I saw underneath made my stomach turn. It was a human. At first, I thought it was one of those classic alien greys people always talk about. You know, the big head, the black eyes. But this thing was off. Its skin looked slimy and mottled, with patches of scales in some areas. Its limbs were long and thin, almost too long like someone had stretched them out. The worst part was its mouth. It was unnaturally wide, stretching across the lower half of its face with rows of sharp, needle-like teeth. I paused the video and just stared at the screen, trying to make sense of what I was seeing. It looked real, too real to be some kind of prank or hoax. My hands were shaking as I hit play again. The people in the hazmat suits didn't speak, at least not loud enough for the camera to pick up. They just stood there, staring at the thing on the table. After a few moments, one of them reached down and placed what looked like electrodes on the creature's chest. The room was dead silent for a second. Then there was a soft, mechanical whirring noise, followed by a high-pitched beep. The creature twitched. It wasn't much, just a slight movement, but enough to make the people in the room jump back. One of them, the one closest to the camera, started frantically gesturing to the others. The camera panned slightly, and I noticed a set of monitors off to the side, showing what looked like vitals, heart rate, brain activity, stuff like that. The creature's brain activity spiked, and the vitals went wild. The creature twitched again, more violently this time. Its arms jerked upward, and its mouth, its mouth opened wide. I couldn't hear anything, but I swear I could feel the scream. It was like the sound wasn't in the video, but in my head, I'm not even sure how to describe it. It was like a high-pitched shriek mixed with static, like a TV that's lost its signal. The video cut to black. I sat there in silence for a few minutes, my mind racing. That thing, whatever it was, it wasn't an alien. At least, not the kind we've all been led to believe in. It was something else, something worse. But I was too deep into it now. I needed to know more. I clicked on the next link. This one wasn't a video. It was another document, but this one was clearer, less redacted. It mentioned Project Lotus, and a few of the phrases jumped out at me. Human integration, psychological reprogramming, and phase four schedule for 2025. It also had a reference to a place called The Garden. 
I didn't know what to make of it at first. Human integration? Psychological reprogramming? What the hell was going on out there? I kept scrolling, but most of the text was blacked out again. The only thing I could really understand was that Project Lotus was some kind of experimental program tied to something they found or created inside Area 51. I was about to close the file when I noticed something at the bottom of the page. A series of numbers. Coordinates. My curiosity got the better of me, so I opened Google Maps and punched in the numbers. It led me to a remote spot in the Nevada desert, not far from where Area 51 was supposed to be. But here's the thing, it wasn't just some random spot. The satellite image showed a fenced-off area, with what looked like a large, square building in the middle. There were no roads leading to it, no signs, no anything. Just a building in the middle of nowhere. I should have stopped there. I should have closed my laptop and pretended none of this ever happened. But I didn't. I started digging through the rest of the files, looking for anything that mentioned Project Lotus or the garden. The more I read, the more I realized that whatever they were doing out there wasn't just about aliens or advanced technology. It was about us. They were experimenting on people, soldiers, prisoners, civilians, anyone they could get their hands on. And whatever they were trying to create, it wasn't natural. The final video I watched was dated October 18th, 2019. It showed a man sitting in a dimly lit room, wearing a hospital gown. He looked disoriented, confused, like he didn't know where he was. The camera zoomed in on his face, and I noticed something strange. His eyes were too big, almost bulging out of his head. His skin had the same weird, mottled texture as the creature from the first video. He started talking, but his voice was distorted, like it was being played through a broken speaker. They? They're in my head. They know everything. They see everything. He kept repeating it over and over. Then he stopped suddenly, his eyes darting toward the camera. You have to stop watching. If you see this, they'll come for you too. The video cut off. I slammed my laptop shut and pushed it away, my heart pounding. That was last week. Since then, weird things have been happening. My phone's been acting up, static on the line, weird clicks when I try to make calls. I've noticed strange cars parked near my apartment, and the other night, I saw a man standing outside my window. He didn't move, didn't come closer. He just stood there, watching. I'm scared. I don't know what's going to happen next, but I feel like I've seen too much. Like I've dug too deep. If you're reading this, don't go looking for Area 51 secrets on the dark web. Don't even think about it. You're not supposed to know what they're doing out there. And if you find out, they'll make sure you never tell anyone. Story number four. All right, so I know this is going to sound like the start of one of those over-the-top dark web horror stories, but I swear to you, this is real. It's not some creepy pasta or ARG or whatever people are calling it these days. I wish it was. Hell, I'd sleep a lot easier if I could just write it off as fiction, but it's not. And now I'm stuck in this nightmare because I couldn't leave well enough alone. It all started about two months ago. I've always been a conspiracy buff, you know? The kind of guy who stays up late reading about government cover-ups, secret projects, and all the weird stuff that most people roll their eyes at. I guess part of me just liked believing that there's more going on in the world than what we see. So, of course, Area 5-1 was always on my radar. But here's the thing. No matter how deep I dug, I never found anything that wasn't already out there in the open. Just the same old stories, the same theories. And I wanted more. I wanted the truth. That's when I got the idea to start searching the dark web. I'd heard rumors that people who really wanted to talk about Area 51 or other government secrets didn't do it on the surface web. They used hidden forums and encrypted sites. I wasn't exactly an expert on the dark web, but I knew enough to get by. I'd used Tor before, mostly out of curiosity, just to see what was out there. This time though, I had a mission. It took a few days of searching, hopping from one dead end to another before I found anything worth looking at. I stumbled across this one forum, buried deep in some obscure directory. It didn't even have a real name, just a string of random numbers and letters with no description or header. Most of the threads were garbage, stuff about Bitcoin, illegal marketplaces, the usual but one post stood out. It was titled 51 underscore unseen underscore files. There was no description, just a link, and the username of the poster was John underscore Doe. 
Real original? I know. But something about it seemed off. The post didn't have any replies. No upvotes. Nothing. It was like it had been posted and immediately forgotten. I hesitated for a moment, thinking maybe it was a trap, or worse, a virus. But my curiosity got the better of me. I clicked the link. It took me to a page that was completely blank except for a single downloadable file. Eden underscore discoveries dot zip. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why the hell would anyone in their right mind download something like that? But I was too curious to stop. I saved the file and opened it up. Inside, there were dozens of documents and a handful of video files. The document names didn't make any sense. Just a bunch of random numbers, but the video files had titles like yex, 51 underscore specimen dot mp4 and subject underscore 005 underscore final dot mp4. I figured I'd start with the documents. The first one I opened was heavily redacted, with entire paragraphs blacked out. But the parts one could read, man, I wish I hadn't. It talked about something called Project Eden. Apparently, this project started as an attempt to reverse engineer biological matter found at a crash site. Yeah, you heard that right, biological matter. At first, it sounded like they were talking about aliens, which wasn't too surprising considering the Area 51 connection. But as I kept reading, it got weirder. They weren't just experimenting with alien DNA. They were splicing it with human DNA. The goal was to create a new species, a hybrid, something that could survive in extreme conditions, resist disease, and have abilities that normal humans couldn't even dream of. Super soldiers, basically, but with alien enhancements. But it went wrong horribly wrong. The documents described subjects that had gone mad, their bodies mutating in ways they hadn't predicted. There were references to something called mental contamination, the idea that these hybrids didn't just change physically but mentally, becoming something other than human. Something hostile. I skimmed through a few more documents, but they were all variations on the same theme. The experiments were out of control, and they didn't know how to contain them. One of the reports mentioned anomalies in the desert, mutated creatures escaping the facility. It wasn't until I opened the videos that I realized just how bad it was. The first one, yex51 underscore specimen dot mp4, looked like it had been shot on a shaky handheld camera. It showed a large, white room with metal walls and a glass observation window. Inside the room, there was a figure strapped to a table. At first, I thought it was just a person, but as the camera zoomed in, I realized it wasn't. Its skin was pale, almost translucent, with patches of what looked like scales running down its arms and legs. Its eyes were way too big, and its limbs were wrong. Too long, too thin. The thing was thrashing against its restraints, letting out this awful, guttural sound that I can still hear in my head. The camera panned to a group of people standing behind the glass, scientists, I guess, one of them was talking into a microphone, though I couldn't hear what he was saying. The creature on the table reacted violently, its back arching as it screamed. Its skin rippled like something was moving underneath, and then it tore. The skin just ripped open, and these long, black tendrils spilled out, writhing and flailing like they were alive. I slammed my laptop shut. I didn't open the other videos after that. I couldn't. I just sat there, trying to process what I'd seen. Whatever they were doing at Area 51, it wasn't about aliens or flying saucers. It was something much worse. Something that should have never been attempted. I should have stopped there. I should have deleted everything and forgotten about it. But I didn't. I was obsessed with finding out more. Over the next few days, I started combing through the rest of the documents, piecing together what I could. That's when I found the reference to Level 9. According to the documents, Level 9 was an underground section of the facility where the most advanced experiments were kept. It was supposed to be off-limits to all but the highest level personnel, and even they had to go through some crazy clearance process just to get down there. But the documents hinted at something worse, that some of the subjects had breach containment. There were mentions of creatures roaming the lower levels of the facility, too dangerous to be studied but too valuable to be destroyed. The scientists had nicknamed them the Children of Eden, I couldn't take it anymore. I had to know if this was real. So, I did the dumbest thing I've ever done in my life. I posted about it on a conspiracy forum. I didn't share the files or the videos, just a vague description of what I'd found. I figured maybe someone else had seen the same things. Maybe they could help me figure out if it was all just some elaborate hoax. That's when the weird stuff started happening. 
The very next day, I noticed a black SUV parked down the street from my apartment. At first, I didn't think much of it, maybe just a neighbor's car. But then I saw it again, and again. It was always in the same spot, always with two guys sitting inside. They never got out, never looked my way, but I knew they were watching. My phone started acting weird too. Calls would drop for no reason. Texts wouldn't go through, and every now and then I'd hear this strange clicking noise when I was talking to someone, like an old-fashioned rotary phone. I even noticed weird flickers on my laptop screen, like someone was remotely accessing it. Then a week ago, I came home to find my front door slightly open. Nothing was stolen, nothing was out of place, but I could feel it. Someone had been inside. My laptop was sitting on the kitchen table, the same place I'd left it, but when I opened it up, all the files were gone. Every single document, every video, deleted. Like they never existed. That's when I knew it wasn't just paranoia. Someone was watching me. Someone knew what I'd found. I don't know who they are. Maybe they're government agents, or maybe they're part of whatever the hell is happening at Area 51. All I know is they want to keep it hidden, and they'll do anything to make sure it stays that way. I haven't seen the SUV in a few days, but that doesn't mean I'm safe. I'm posting this as a warning. If you ever get the urge to dig into Area 51 on the dark web, don't. Whatever they're doing out there, it's not meant for us to know. And if you find out, they'll make sure you regret it. Story number five. I wasn't planning on writing this, but I feel like I don't have a choice anymore. Things have gotten out of control, and I need to get this off my chest before it's too late. If you're reading this, I'm not looking for sympathy. I just want to give you a warning. The truth about Area 51 is real, but it's not what you think. And once you find it, there's no going back. Let me start from the beginning. I've always been one of those guys who was fascinated by government conspiracies. Area 51, Roswell, and Kaeltra. Anything that smelled like a cover-up, I wanted to know about it. I know it sounds cliche, but for me it wasn't just some phase. I wanted to uncover the real secrets, the stuff the government was hiding from us. And like a lot of people, I thought the dark web was where I'd find those answers. I'd messed around on the dark web a few times before. Nothing major, mostly just curious seeing what was out there. But a few months ago, I got this idea in my head that if I was ever going to find anything about Area 5-1, that wasn't already public, that's where it would be. I thought I'd find some old government files, maybe some grainy photos of UFOs or experimental aircraft. What I found instead was something far worse. After a couple of weeks of searching, I finally stumbled upon a small, hidden forum. It wasn't flashy, no UFO graphics or weird government symbols, just a plain black page with a list of threads. There was barely any activity on the forum, and most of the posts were from years ago. But one thread caught my eye, the title was Eden, The Gate to Hell, posted by a user named underscore in 7 underscore Spectre. It had no replies and barely any views. Normally, I wouldn't have clicked on something with such an over-the-top name, but my gut told me this was different. Inside the thread was a single link with a note that read, This is the truth. Only go deeper if you're ready to face it. I clicked the link without even thinking. It took me to a page I'd never seen before. Just a blank background with a single prompt asking for a password. I had no idea what it could be so I closed out of it and went back to the forum. But as I scrolled down, I saw something I hadn't noticed before. At the bottom of the post, there was a string of numbers. A code. I went back to the site and typed in the numbers. The page loaded immediately. What came next was the strangest, most disturbing thing I've ever seen. The website looked like an old school file repository folders within folders, each labeled with a string of numbers and letters that made no sense at first glance. But after digging through a few of them, I started to realize what I was looking at. These were files connected to something called Project Eden. The deeper I went, the more unsettling it got. Most of the documents were heavily redacted, but I managed to piece together that Project Eden was an experimental program tied to Area 51. At first, it seemed like just another military operation, top secret, of course. But the further I read, the more I realized that this was something far darker. They weren't just researching aliens. They were experimenting with something. Something alive. There was one document that stood out, though. It was a transcript from a conversation between two high-ranking officials. The names were redacted, 
but the conversation was chilling. They talked about a discovery at the site in Nevada that went beyond anything they'd expected. They didn't just find alien technology, they found something biological. And worse, they were trying to figure out how to use it. At this point, my hands were shaking. I should have stopped right there. I knew I'd seen enough, but I couldn't pull myself away. I had to know more, so I kept going. That's when I found the videos. There were four of them, all labeled with dates, the earliest one from 1994. I clicked on the first one, and my screen went black for a few seconds before the video loaded. It was grainy, old, and looked like it had been shot on a security camera. The footage showed a long, sterile hallway with bright fluorescent lights flickering overhead. In the distance, I saw two men in hazmat suits pushing a gurney down the hall. The thing on the gurney was covered by a sheet, but whatever was underneath, it wasn't human. The shape was all wrong, long, twisted limbs pushing against the fabric like it was struggling to break free. I fast-forwarded, but the video cut out suddenly, just as the two men turned a corner. There was no sound, no explanation, just static. I clicked on the next video. This one was from 2001, and it looked like it was shot inside a lab. Several scientists stood around a large metal table, staring at something just out of the frame. The camera slowly panned over to the table, and that's when I saw it. The creature was strapped down, its body riddled with tubes and wires. It was humanoid, but barely. Its skin was gray, almost translucent, with patches of black that looked like they were rotting. Its eyes, God, its eyes were huge, completely black, like pools of ink. The thing was breathing labored shallow breaths, and I could see its chest rising and falling, almost like it was in pain. One of the scientists muttered something under his breath, and then, without warning, the creature's eyes snapped open. It let out this horrible, guttural noise, something between a scream and a growl. The camera shook as one of the scientists stumbled back, knocking over a tray of instruments. The creature started thrashing violently, ripping out the tubes that were embedded in its skin. And then the video cut to black. I sat there in shock for what felt like hours. My mind was racing. I couldn't understand what I'd just seen. Was it real? Some kind of sick experiment? I wanted to believe it was fake, some kind of elaborate hoax, but the more I thought about it, the more I knew that it wasn't. I wasn't supposed to see this. That night, I started hearing strange noises outside my apartment. At first, it was just the sound of a car idling too long in the parking lot. Then there were footsteps in the hallway. I opened the door once, but no one was there. Still, I could feel it. someone was watching me. The next morning, I tried to go back to the site, but it was gone. The forum, the files, everything had disappeared. I asked around on a few other conspiracy forums, but no one had ever heard of Project Eden. It was like it never existed. And then things got worse. I started getting phone calls, block numbers, long pauses on the other end before the line went dead. My internet connection would drop randomly, and my laptop started acting weird, running slow, crashing. And at night, I swear I can hear voices outside my window, whispering in a language I don't understand.
no strange graphics. Just a blank page with a single download link titled Omega underscore records dot zip. I stared at it for a long time. I knew the risks, viruses, malware, and hell, maybe the FBI tracking me for all I knew, but I'd gone this far. Curiosity overpowered my sense of self-preservation, and I clicked it. Once the file downloaded, I extracted it. Inside were several documents, some video files, and a folder labeled Eden underscore prototypes. The document names were a mix of numbers and letters, completely random at first.
were shaking like he was terrified of something. Across from him, just outside the frame, someone was asking him questions, but their voice was distorted like it had been run through some voice changer. It was hard to make out, but I caught bits and pieces. How long were you inside the facility? What did you see? Did they communicate with you? The guy just kept shaking his head, mumbling I don't know over and over again. Then suddenly he screamed, this blood-curdling scream that made my skin crawl. He was thrashing in his chair, like he was having a seizure. And then, just as quickly as it started, he stopped. He went limp, slumped over the table dead. The video cut off there. I felt sick, like I was about to throw up. This wasn't like anything I'd seen before. It didn't feel fake. The terror in that man's eyes was too real, too raw. But I kept going. I couldn't stop myself. The last video I watched, I wish I hadn't. The timestamp was from 2005. The video quality was better, like it had been filmed with a handheld camera. It showed the outside of a building, somewhere in the desert, surrounded by a chain link fence. The camera zoomed in on a sign, restricted area, no trespassing. The cameraman, whoever he was, moved closer, staying low, trying to avoid being seen. He made his way to a window and the camera panned inside. What I saw next, it's burned into my mind. There were tanks like those big cylindrical ones you see in science fiction movies, but this wasn't a movie. There was something floating inside them. Humanoid, but not human. Their skin was pale, almost translucent, and their eyes, their eyes were huge, black, and lifeless. There were tubes connected to them, like they were being kept alive, but they weren't moving. The cameraman zoomed in on one of the creatures, and for a split second, its eyes snapped open, staring directly at the camera. The camera shook violently, and the video cut to static. I slammed my laptop shut and just sat there, staring at the wall, trying to process what I'd just seen. My heart was pounding, and my hands were slick with sweat. This couldn't be real. It had to be some elaborate hoax. But deep down, I knew it wasn't. This was real. I'd just seen something I was never supposed to see. I deleted the files immediately, but it didn't matter. It was too late. I'd already watched them, and something changed after that. My paranoia kicked into overdrive. I started hearing strange noises at night, footsteps outside my door, knocks on the windows. My internet started acting weird too, slowing down, disconnecting at random. And then a few days later, my laptop was wiped. I don't know how it happened, but one morning I woke up and everything was gone. I tried to forget about it, to convince myself it was all some elaborate prank, but I can't shake the feeling that I'm being watched. I've noticed black SUVs parked down the street, following me when I go out. I don't talk about it with anyone, because who would believe me? But I know they're watching. I know they saw what I saw. And now, I think they're coming for me. Story number eight. So, let me preface this by saying I'm usually not the type to take risks. I'm just your average 20-something with a job, a best friend named Jake, and a slightly concerning obsession with conspiracy theories. You know, the typical a little too much time on the internet kind of person. But one night last month, Jake and I were scrolling through a Reddit thread that linked to the dark web, and before we knew it, I was clicking that link. I know, I know. It sounds ridiculous. Every horror movie teaches you not to venture into the dark web. And yet there I was, fueled by curiosity and the thrill of maybe finding some real conspiratorial gold. I didn't think anything would happen. I thought I'd just find some weird videos or bizarre memes. Boy, was I wrong. Jake gave me instructions on how to navigate the dark web, but I'm no tech wizard. I stumbled my way through the first few layers, feeling a mix of anxiety and excitement. Everything looked like a jumbled mess of URLs and strange names. This place was truly a digital ghost town with its unsettling anonymity. I clicked around aimlessly until I landed on a forum titled Area 51 Secrets. It had a handful of creepy posts about government experiments and cryptids, but nothing that screamed, get out. Curiosity got the better of me, and I started digging deeper. One post caught my eye. It had a link to something called Project Nightshade. The title was too tempting, and before I could second guess myself, I clicked on it. A video popped up, the thumbnail was grainy, and my pulse quickened as the playback module started. 
A distorted voice began explaining how Area 51 had been more than just a military testing ground. It was supposedly a storage facility for alien technology. Like real-life extraterrestrial stuff. My heart raced. I wanted to laugh it off, but it felt oddly convincing. As I watched, I felt an overwhelming dread creeping in. The video started showing what looked like military-grade machinery interspersed with bizarre low-light images of what I assumed were aliens. Then came the sound, the distinct crackle of static, followed by whispered voices. It felt like they were coming from all around me. I could almost hear them in my apartment, sending chills down my spine. My fingers trembled as I clicked through more links under the forum. Accidentally, I opened a different video. This one didn't have a straightforward title. It was just a series of numbers. I nearly closed it when the screen flickered and displayed what looked like night vision footage. The shaky camera captured a desolate landscape, probably somewhere in Nevada. The caption faded in, they are watching us. The camera focused on something in the distance. At first, it was hard to make out, but as I squinted and leaned closer, my stomach sank. It was a group of shadowy figures, something too tall, too slender, moving in a way that felt utterly unnatural. I could see vague outlines against the desert backdrop, their extremities stretching in the dark. My fingers were now shaking uncontrollably. I needed to bounce back, get away from this trap. But before I could pull myself away, a sudden chill swept through the room. My computer screen flickered again. I swear I saw the faces of those figures plastered across the screen, their wide-set eyes staring back at me. I felt paralyzed, unable to look away. All at once, my bedroom light began to flicker. Jake! I called out, but my voice echoed like a ghost in the dim, flickering room. I always thought people were exaggerating when they said technology could act up during paranormal experiences, but here I was, exploring the dark web, and my lights looked like they were auditioning for a horror film. With a surge of adrenaline, I slammed my laptop shut dragged it to the corner of my room, and fumbled for my phone. I shot Jake a quick text. Dude, we need to talk. This is not good. My hands were sweating, and I felt stupid for ever letting my curiosity lead me down this path. As I paced the room, trying to shake off the insidious feeling, my phone buzzed with a reply. It was Jake. What's up? You okay? I quickly messaged him about everything I'd seen, but as I typed, I realized that I was still in the same house with that video echoing in my mind. The stillness around me felt like it was breathing, suffocating me. I took a deep breath to steady myself, but honestly, I was losing it. A loud sound jolted me from my thoughts. It was a knock at the front door. My heart plummeted. Who could that be? Living alone, it wasn't common for someone to show up unannounced. I couldn't bring myself to answer. Instead, I switched off all the lights, hoping whoever it was would think no one was home. The knocking persisted, now combined with a muffled voice low and rough, calling my name. I thought maybe it was an elaborate prank from Jake, but his messages hadn't come through in 10 minutes. I could have sworn I heard a sound, like the harsh static from the video, mixing with the whispers from the dark corners of my mind. With every second that passed, dread settled in my gut. I reached for my phone to get ready to call someone, anyone, but then it hit me. What if whoever was outside saw I had my phone light on? I turned it off. The knocking just stopped. Pure silence took over, enveloping the room like a fog. It felt wrong. It wasn't the absence of sound. It was too still, as if the world outside my door had just paused. I waited and waited, my heart hammering in my chest, until finally, the whispers returned. Somehow, they seemed to pulsate from the walls, soft yet persistent. Then I heard it a scuffling sound and another knock. Not on the door this time, but on my window. A spike of panic shot through me as I dared to peer out from behind the curtain. Nothing. Just the darkness of the night. But when I glanced at my laptop in the corner, the screen flickered back to life, illuminating the room in a sickly green glow. In that moment, I got it. The dark web had intertwined with my reality. All those images, those whispers, I was being watched. I slammed my hands over my ears, rocking back and forth, trying to convince myself it was just a nightmare. I had to get out. And then, through the barely opened window, a single whisper broke the silence, 
clear as day. You can't escape. We're already inside. That night I didn't sleep. I just stared into the darkness, waiting for the sunrise, knowing deep down that I had crossed a line I wasn't ever supposed to. And some doors, once opened, can never be closed again. So, yeah, if you're thinking about venturing into that abyss called the dark web, don't. Whatever you think you might find, it's not worth the price it might extract from you. I don't think I'm ever going to feel safe in my own skin again.